Hello and welcome back to the Coach's Legacy channel. In this video, we're going to explore how to use the select method inside Beautiful Soup to extract data from HTML content. We're going to explore several examples, several techniques we, that we can use to extract data from different types of HTML content. All right, here I have some very basic HTML content written out that we're going to be practicing on in today's video. So let's begin. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you how to extract a simple HTML tag, like the title. Okay, we're going to extract this HTML element. So let's do soup. Okay, soup is the uh, beautiful soup object that we have created, HTML parser for parsing HTML. Then we're going to do dot select. Then in the parentheses, we are going to pass in what we want to find. The HTML tag that we want to locate. So if we want to find the title, we write title. And then I'm just going to save the value and then print it out. Okay. And this prints out a list which contains this HTML tag. And the reason this gives us a list because select locates all, locates all title tags. That's why it returns an iTruple that we can iterate over. If there are two of these, for example, let's just change this to Coder's Legacy Tutorial 2. Then if I run this code again, it has two titles inside this list. Now, if you don't want it to be in a list format, then you can do select underscore one, and this returns a single item as a string. Okay, it's a single HTML tag. But there's still one more thing that we need to do. This is an HTML tag, but what if we want the title in it? Because the HTML tag is more or less useless to us, at least in most scenarios. We don't really want this. We want the text inside this tag. So how do we do that? How do we find the text inside the tag? Well, it's very easy. We don't need to do any parsing ourselves. A beautiful soup does that for us. Just call the get text method like this on whichever element, on whichever HTML tag that you want to extract text from. Hit enter, and this gives us our text right here. Now, it is worth mentioning that if you use select, you can't directly call get text on it because it's a list. Now, we need to call get text on the HTML string within that list. So, we're going to do something like change this to elements. Then, I trade over this these elements, all right, for element in elements, then we can call the get text method on each one of these elements, all right? So this prints out the text, and if I duplicate this, show you that there are two titles, then it's going to print out both of their texts, okay? Now let's explore some other more interesting ways that we can extract data. So let's move on to this part over here, which is the main content in our HTML. Here we have a bunch of paragraphs which have classes. Classes are like the most commonly used HTML tags. Uh, these are attributes basically. Classes are very important because we have a lot of HTML content in a page. There are hundreds of paragraph tags, uh, dozens of divs, and like dozens of headings. How do we figure out which ones we want to extract? Like, you want a paragraph, sure, but which paragraph do you want? For example, let's take a look at this HTML content right here. We have these three paragraphs. Now, I could just go ahead and extract each one of these paragraphs. And let's just print out the paragraphs themselves. Okay, and let me just clear this again and run this. Okay, see, we got all three paragraphs. But again, this, what we did right here, was a generic way to select every paragraph inside the page. And very rarely do we actually want this kind of behavior. Usually we're after some very specific piece of information. So let's assume over here that we want the paragraph tags with the class of first, okay? And that's, what, that's how a good HTML page is structured. Different types of paragraph tags uh, have different classes. And if they're not well structured, if the page is not well structured and there are no classes, then it's going to be very hard for you to scrape it because we use these classes 
uh, as a means of identifying which paragraph tags to scrape and which ones not to. To put it very simply, if you are scraping a web page with three types of paragraph tags, uh, one of them ha features red text, one, one of them features blue, one of them features green, and you only want the blue text. Now, unless there's a class that says something like class is equal to blue text, you won't be able to differentiate which one, uh, you know, you won't, be able, you won't be able to differentiate the blue text from the green one or the red one if they don't have any classes, if they don't have unique classes assigned to, to them. Anyways, let's get to some actual work now. How do we find the paragraph tags with the class of first? We're going to do dot first and dots, that's all we need to do. Just hit enter and it's going to print out only these two. See this one and this one. Okay, so basically the format for getting a class uh, HTML element with a certain class is dot then the name of the class. Okay, we can even just remove this. All right, and this will return all HTML elements with the class of first. So if I, for example, give this uh, a tag a class of first and then run this code, it's going to return the a tag as well. All right, so it's not restricted to just one HTML element. Now, one more thing that is worth mentioning is that sometimes a uh, HTML element can have more than one class. It can have two or more classes, and that's very common. Uh, you'll understand this if you're familiar with CSS and stuff. You want to apply multiple CSS styles on a single HTML element. But if, if, if you don't know about that kind of thing, it's okay. You just need to know about it from a scraping perspective, is that sometimes they have multiple classes, All right, and that usually makes it easier to scrape them because you know, they have a more unique combination and stuff. So for example, let's say that this paragraph tag has both the classes first and second, and this is the format. So if you ever see an HTML element with a space, okay, that means that there are two classes. The classes are separated by a space. So what we do now is p dot first, then comma p dot second, and uh, I think actually, yeah, yeah, sorry. Th what this does is returns all classes with either first or second. Okay, all paragraph tags with either the first or second class. But what we want is to only return this one. We only want to return the paragraph tag with both classes, not a paragraph tag with only one of them. So what we're going to do is first dot second. Okay, so write the first class, then dot, and then the second class, then hit enter. And it's only going to return that paragraph tag now. Now, there's one thing I'm curious about. If we reverse the order, what is going to happen? Okay, it still works. Interesting. Um, all right, I guess it doesn't really matter. So what else can we do? Well, let's say that we wanted to acquire this class. We want to get the class. Like, what is the class of this HTML element? So instead of just printing out the element or printing out the text, what we can do instead is this. Okay, use the square brackets, just like you're indexing a list or something, then write class. All right, and then hit enter. And as you can see, this is printing out the classes uh, of this element. Okay, and the reason why it's a list is because an HTML element can have more than one class. So even if I remove this and, and you know, scrape both of these, both paragraph tags with first and second, then all of these are lists. Okay, now let's take a look at HRFs. All right, so I'm going to replace this. Let's just remove that, okay, and remove that too. Let's say that I want to get this href, okay? We have two hrfs, one here and one here. And let me just remove that, that's not relevant, okay? So if I just do this, then I get these two hrfs, right? I get these two hrfs. But what if I only wanted to acquire this one, okay? The one I have highlighted over here, coderslegacy.com, the one with this href and this text. How do I uniquely identify this href tag. 
none of these have a class, so we can't identify them on the basis of a class. But what they do have is an ID. This one has an ID. So what we could do is identify it using an ID. To do this, we use a hashtag symbol, and then we'll do one. Or wait, is that gonna work? No. Well, that's a bit strange. Let me remove the quotation marks. Maybe that's causing it. Okay. Try this. Oh. Okay, so I made a slight mistake. IDs in CSS do not start with a number. Okay, so it's more like, uh, I don't know, pick something. Hello. All right. Then, okay, that's the ID, and then it's going to print that out. Okay, so that's how we can identify by ID. But let's make things a bit more difficult on us. Let's say we didn't have this ID. All right. And now we're confused. How do we differentiate this A tag from this one? Okay, this is very common, okay? This is gonna happen a lot. So you need to be prepared. Well, what you can do, when you cannot think of a way to identify that HTML tag, the very next thing that you should do is look at the parent, the direct parent. Over here, we can see that this A tag is inside a div, which, is, which has the class example one. So what we can do here is div, dot example one all right this will give us the div then we can do space then press a and what this is going to do is give us the a tags within the div with example one so if i run this we get our a tag all right and this is how you can this is what you're going to be doing a lot okay you're going to be looking for a div with a class and then you look for elements inside that div all right, so if I create another div over here, just to give you a little more realism. All right, this, this has example two as a class. Then we close the div, then just put this over here. Now, if I want the A tag over here, I would do this. Okay, and this would give us this one. All right, and it's even possible that there might be another div in here. Class is equal to example three all right and again this is stuff you'll have to face if you're serious about scraping and stuff so what i'll do here is div dot example one div dot example two uh wait no example three then space then we get this and if we could just do this by the way in this case all right but sometimes we may need to specify the full path because for example that this may be duplicated and let's just remove this one or let's just change the class of this one to three all right so now there are two divs with the class is equal to example three so how do we differentiate we can differentiate because the parent over here is example one so if i did this for example it would return whoops clear all right if I did this, it's going to return both of these because both of these are in div with a class of example three. But if I do div dot example one, then example three, then the a tag, then it's going to return this one. All right, so there's one or two more things I want to cover before we end the video. So let's get to those quickly. So let me just remove this and simplify things a bit. Okay, and let me just uh, put in a paragraph tag over here, duplicate one of these, and another third paragraph. Okay, now I want to show you the concept of descendants in CSS selectors. So let me show you something. If I do div, then I do space, then I do p. Uh, and let me just do div.example1 so you know for sure I'm talking about this div right here. So what this is going to do is give us all the paragraph tags within this div and that includes this one okay this includes uh, like no matter how many nested levels there are there could be many divs within this div but as long as their paragraphs there are paragraph tags at some level it doesn't matter how deep it's going to return those paragraph tags if i run 
this that gives me an error. Why? Hmm. Oh, wait. It would take code in our file. All right, here we go. See, this gives us these four paragraph tags. So to summarize, it gave us these three and then it gave us this. But what if we only want the direct children, the direct descendants? So what we're going to do is this, this crocodile here, All right? Let me just clear this and run it again. Again, take code runner, All right? So it prints out these three, only these three. It doesn't print out this one because it's not a direct descendant. Okay, so this is one important concept I wanted to tell you guys. One last concept I should have mentioned earlier when talking about HRFs. Let me just undo this a bit back to when we had HRFs. All right. So let's assume that you wanted to get the HRF, the HRF value. How would you do that? Well, what we could do. Okay. So this gives us the URL, right? Uh, the A tag. So what we're going to do is square brackets, then write the name of the attribute here that we want. These are all attributes hrf classes id these are all attributes so if i do this it's going to give us the hrf and if i give this a class all right a class called url and then i write url here wait sorry if i write class over here it gives us url okay similarly we saw the same thing happened with id i think we did right so if we do id is equal to uh, URL and let's just remove that okay if I change this to ID it's going to give us the ID okay and that's the end of this video I hope you guys found this informative and useful if you want to see more content like this in the future make sure to subscribe to the channel leave a like leave a comment let me know what you thought and I'll see you guys hopefully in a future video bye then